I'm currently painting a lot of pet friends, people who send me their pictures. I'm going to paint their pet. I'm going to do it for fun. And today I thought I would do a demonstration of Lilac. Lilac is the name of this dog that was sent to me. And we're going to do a mass for value mix for color demonstration. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the picture. And we've got a nice, nice little puppy to do. And I put my color at dab sheet and I make some columns. D is for dark, M is for medium, L is for light. I'm going to follow a direct strategy here. First I take, instead of using some um, white out or, or masking fluid, I put some watered down Naples yellow as my lights. These are the whites that I want to preserve. I don't want to drive over them later. And if I don't map them out now, uh, I'll, I'll forget. So L is light, and that's going to be the lightest value that I'm going to put on the painting. There will be one value lighter than that, of course, which will be the white of the paper, but there'll be very little of that left when I'm done. Now I'm over on the side doing some mixing because I've got to figure out where my darkest darks are. So I'm going to be painting pretty much from, well, I'm starting with my lightest lights, then I'm going to put in what I know to be the darkest darks, and then I'm going to go into my mid-tones and then later come back and adjust. But we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, so here comes some darks. I'm checking with the value finder to make sure it's a dark. Well, of course I know it's a dark, but I'm going to be putting other colors, not just one color, in that dark column. You can see one looks a little bit violet, one looks a little bit blue. I want to make sure that these are all the same value, the same darkness. I'm using a number 12 brush, which is pretty pretty large brush for uh, the painting, which is only, I think, an 8 by 8 So the reason for doing that is I don't want to get picky or persnickety. I want to keep looking at broad shapes. But, I, but okay, so here's, here's another dark, but it's tipped a little bit toward red. So you've got a violet, a blue, and a red. In other words, what I'm doing is I'm, what I say in my sign-off, I'm massing for value. I'm finding those value shapes, and then I'm, I'm mixing color. I found three dark colors that I can put into that shape, though, into those shapes instead of one color. The other thing that I'm doing, now I'm going to dry everything. The other thing that I'm doing is I am following the direction that the fur is growing. I think it's important to use the brush um, in the same way that the forms are made. It, it helps create volume. So I've got my lightest lights. You saw me do that. I mapped those out so I don't drive over them. I put in my darkest darks. Now I have to sit and think for a minute because what's left are a lot of mid-tones. I decided I didn't have enough darks yet. Or what, let's see, what did I do? Ah, okay. I made a dark that I'm going to save for later. Now I'm into mid-tones. So these are all the colors that are going to come in now are lighter than my darkest darks. They have to be lighter than my darkest darks and darker than my lightest lights. <laughs> as long as it meets that criterion, then the colors can fit in the mid column or the M column. So that's what I'm doing. I'm squinting my eyes. I have took care of my darkest darks, so I'm not paying attention to them anymore. I don't have to think about my lightest lights because I saved them. Here comes the pink tongue. Um, typically, you know, reds, reds, light greens, uh, they're just certain colors that kind of fit into the mid-tones. Oranges will often be in the mid-tones, although well, they, they kind of skew toward uh, lights. Oranges and yellows kind of skew toward lights. Um, so I'm mixing a lot of neutrals because the dog is sort of a grayish, tannish color. Um, I mean, he looks black, but when you really squint your eyes and look at it, you realize that the fur is made up of lots of different grays and tans. So I'm mixing those and constantly using the viewfinder because I want to check and make sure that I'm following my plan, that everything in the mid column is indeed lighter than my darkest darks and darker than my lightest lights. As long as I do that, I can fill in those mid-tone shapes. And most paintings that I have, or most paintings that I do, tend to have um, a few lights, um, more darks, but mostly mid-tones. 
Now, you saw me, you saw where I put cerulean blue. <laughs> I just threw cerulean blue into the nose, into the eye. The reason I do that is because uh, I have a feel for it. I just feel like I see it there. Cerulean blue works very nicely for me as a, um, I'm using it as a neutral here. But I find if I do put a little bit of uh, cerulean or, or what you would call pure color mix, uh, if you put color spot, I call it a color spot of value. I know that cerulean blue is really a dark value. I should have put it in the D column, but I, I, I didn't because I, I just know that. And so what I did instead was I swapped it. I swapped it for what would have been a neutral. And it has a lot more um, color intensity because it's surrounded by mostly neutrals. That's why that blue looks particularly blue, and it's also why the tongue looks particularly uh, pink or red, because everything else is a neutral. And also those neutrals are all mixed up from all the colors that I'm mixing here are not coming from the tube. They're all coming from mixes that I'm making, and that's the reason why they kind of go together nicely. So most of the time I'm using ultramarine blue, um, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna and using those to create my neutrals and the reason i picked those is because then you have theoretically a red a yellow and a blue as long as you have a red yellow and a blue they can mix together and will neutralize all right so things are looking bet okay but a little bit spotty and that always happens oh i had trouble with that eye that eye in the back i think i fixed it in the end yeah i did but um, sometimes, you know, sometimes the picture, I don't want to say lies to you, but gives you information that is not helpful. And I had to work that out and figure out um, how, how to make that read correctly. So the dog didn't look like, like he was, um, like the, the eyes were wrong. All right. So now I've got my, now it's time to get back in and do some dark work. Because the dark, I didn't account for this. I knew it was going to come later, but the darkest darks are on his, his shoulder where I am right now. So I've mixed up uh, a mixture that's almost what I would call black, but of course it's not black. I don't have black and I don't have white on my palette. There is no black, there is no white, only if I mix it or create it by, by putting colors adjacent to other colors. All right, so want to make sure this things, now things are starting to fill in a little bit more. And I think I was a little bit worried here because, let's see, I'm not sure, I, I, knew, I knew I didn't have what I wanted yet. Um, there's some form on the nose that I know I want to get. And let's, let's see, I'm going to work on that and see. I think I go back into my mediums to get it. But first I'm going to dry everything. But look at all the color dabs that I had to make to get this far. That's a lot. All right, so now I'm going back in and finding, I did, uh, there we go, there, fix the eyes, something wasn't working there, finding, reinforcing those dark darks that I put in at the very beginning, making them, putting in like a second layer in a way, making them just a little bit darker and more impactful. I still wasn't happy with the eye, I guess I'm going to worry about that, but it works out in the end, always works out in the end. Oh, cerulean blue comes back, and this time I put it where it belonged between the darks and the mediums. I also put a little bit of pink into the dog's eye, a little bit of pink in the fur. I think it's really important not to just have one color spot, but to have a few throughout the painting for consistency. Now I'm gonna get involved in the lightest lights because I can't leave that um, Naples yellow just the way it is. There's form there and I have to create that. So what I'm doing is I created some more neutrals, but made sure that they're lighter than the neutrals that I used in the medium column. So I've completely stuck to plan here from darks, mediums to lights. And now I'm checking with the viewfinder and indeed it's true. I did exactly what I planned to do. I have my darks, my mediums, my lights. And in the end, if I looked at those shapes and made them correspond to the uh, color value, then they end up with a dog's face. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.